Bioreactors play a very important role in production of many commercially important biotechnological and fermentation products. Therefore, it is necessary for us to understand the bioreactor design. In this particular lecture, we will understand the basics of bioreactor design. The of objectives of this particular lecture include understanding of bioprocess and fermentation products, the salient features of bioreactor with respect to the chemical reactors, also understanding the unique features of bioprocess as many of these bioprocess involve microorganisms, the living organisms. We shall then understand the basics of bioreactor design, also try to know the basic elements and components of a bioreactor. Various commercially important products manufactured through fermentation or bioprocess include single cell proteins, biofertilizers, antibiotics, vitamins, organic acids, amino acids and a wide range of microbial enzymes, biopharmaceuticals and therapeutic recombinant proteins. Let's understand the complexity of bioreactor design. Bioreactor systems involve live microorganisms and therefore must be designed with a higher degree of control. Microorganisms are more sensitive and less stable than chemicals. They are prone to contamination. Process variables in a bioreactor are more difficult to control. The biggest challenge of the bioreactor is maintaining the desired activity and also eliminating and minimizing undesired metabolites. Production of the desired product is more important than other outcomes, more so in the production of complex protein therapeutics. Therefore, a bioreactor design must be robust and requires more selectivity. Production of microbial metabolites occur in a very small range of selective conditions of pH and temperature. Therefore, it is necessary for us to control these parameters and these parameters are to be included in the design consideration of a bioreactor. Some of the other unique aspects of a bioprocess include the concentration of the starting material and products are usually low. Also, the substrates and products may inhibit the production of the desired metabolite. Cell growth and product formation is dependent on the bioprocess environment. The maintenance of conditions within a narrow limits such as media, oxygen supply, inhibitors, effectors, precursors, and other metabolic products influence the product formation and the production. At times, microorganisms can produce unexpected, unconventional products because of the process conditions in the bioreactor. They are also prone to mutations when grown under suboptimal conditions. Many a times, a fermentation is carried out in a highly viscous and non-Newtonian media. As microorganisms are sensitive to shear stress, also the thermal and chemical influences, these considerations have to be looked upon in designing a bioreactor. Process conditions affect the growth, flocculation, autolysis of microorganisms, which in turn can affect the productivity. Therefore, the bioreactors at times exhibit complex dynamic behavior. The design should be robust enough to accommodate such a complex dynamic behavior. Let us try to understand the basics of bioreactor as seen in the diagram. A bioreactor is a closed cylindrical vessel which supports the metabolic activity of the microorganisms. And the basic function of a bioreactor is to provide a suitable and controlled environment so that the microorganism can efficiently produce the targeted commercial product. 
the design and mode of operation of a bioreactor is dependent on the production organism the design may be different for a bacteria for a ferment for a fungi for an actinomycetes or for any other organism the operating conditions required for production formation product value and scale of production also influences the design of the bioreactor in view of special requirements of a bioprocess bioreactors are to be designed carefully they are supposed to be robust to handle a large amount of contents and they must withstand the liquid and sterilization pressure in order to do so they must be made up of a very good quality material which can withstand the conditions inside a vessel and the material should be very cost effective so as to give us the desirable product usually the bioreactors are made up of a glass or a stainless steel with specialized coatings required for the process the main objective of any bioreactor should give us a high productivity so therefore a design should include facilities for control of the parameters that monitor the fermentation process these parameters may include a ph temperature or the inclusion of a biosensors and time and money are the most important components of production of any industrially important product so is the case of a bio product therefore a bioreactor design should take into consideration the capital investment the running cost the mode of operation of a bioreactor which can be a batch mode fed batch or a continuous mode or on the production organism many of the fermentations are carried out by different microorganism groups such as bacteria fungi yeast accordingly the design will differ the optimal conditions required for the target production product value and also the scale of fermentation there are different types of fermentation products and each of them may require different design consideration large volume and low value products such as alcoholic beverages need a simple design while high value low volume products may require an elaborate system of operation and more stringent aseptic conditions and recombinant protein products require much more higher design and robust features for a bioreactor basically the following are the features basic points that are to be considered for a bioreactor it should be capable of being operated aseptically as it involves the growth of microorganisms and each unique microorganism produce an unique product contaminations are to be avoided therefore they should provide sterile conditions and they should be reliable for long term operations many of the fermentation operation are carried out for a more than a week and must be able to hold a large amount of materials and their pressure as the size of bioreactors vary the amount of materials and contents also vary and they exert some pressure the bioreactor material should be able to withstand such pressure the bioreactor should provide adequate aeration and agitation which is done through impellers and these aeration and agitation are important for uniform mixing of the contents in the vessel also many of the fermentations are aerobic in nature a bioreactor should not allow any excess of evaporation losses so that the concentration of the metabolites may influence the and a bioreactor should be equipped with controlling probes the biosensors for maintenance of temperature ph and oxygen level it facilitate 
the passage of inoculum and the media into the vessel it should consume less power also minimize the labor input the operation cost the harvesting cost the cleaning and maintenance should be more robust enough in summary in summary the bioreactor design should consider the productivity yield bioreactor operability product purification water management energy requirements and waste treatment for a design process a typical bioreactor would consist of the following elements it should have an agitation system a system monitoring of the variables that are undergoing in the fermenter using the sensors and there is a thermal jacket to protect or to provide an controlled temperature environment there is a submerged aerator which will produce the aeration through the spargers oxygen is supplied to the microbial content and there is a facility for medium and inoculum and also the other basic systems are included in this fermentation design following are the basic components of a bioreactor as you can observe a fermenter is a closed vessel that provides a controlled environment for the growth of microorganism it consists of a top plate a cover that is generally made up of stainless steel an inoculation pipe to support or to port the inoculum and other media contents and it has got a drive motor which is drives the impeller shaft for providing the agitation and impeller shaft that holds the agitation centrally and an impeller an agitating device for mixing up of the nutrients and microorganisms uniformly it also consists of a stirrer which mixes the contents as well as the gas the oxygen which is supplied through the spargers which supplies the oxygen and air uh, to the culture media and it also has got a drain point that makes us allow to withdraw the cells and medium uh, also the cooling jacket the thermal facilities for control of temperatures an ideal bioreactor will include the controlling elements for monitoring the temperature ph acid bases oxygen supply and also pressure all these variables have to be measured and have to be run in a limited condition so as to get a higher yield therefore a bioreactor will include the incorporation of the necessary sensors such as thermocouples which will monitor the temperature a foam probe which will sense a foam and a ph electrode which will monitor a ph ph plays a very important role in the production many of the microorganisms will be able to produce the desired products in a very narrow range of ph therefore the control of ph is a very important similarly many organisms require oxygen and therefore an oxygen sensor maintains the dissolved oxygen and accordingly the control systems are made in such a way that the organisms get sufficient oxygen and and we have other necessary parameters such as control of air flow through rotameter a pressure valve an air pump a peristaltic pump to introduce the uh, additional acid base or anti foams into the medium various parameters such as temperature pressure ph foam agitation aeration dissolved gas oxygen carbon dioxide influence the productivity of a fermentation 
also vessel contents the chemical environment the biosensors viscosity play an important role in bioreactor design all these factors have to be considered before designing a bioreactor in summary a bioreactor design should consider a variety of factors and the basic point is they deal with the living systems and all the necessary parameters which are required for an optimal growth and for a higher yield are to be considered and incorporated in a bioreactor design thank you for your patient listening questions if any are welcome